Yo, Elliot, I'm planning to start a family very soon. I wanted to get myself in order and get my Catholic foundations right before doing so. This is the main reason why I'm doing Exodus, and it came at the perfect time. I had a breakthrough. I've struggled with multiple addictions in the past, the main one being alcohol. I've tried to quit many times but failed. This time was different because I gave up trying and God has done it for me. Congratulations, brother. What an amazing testimony. 73 days into Exodus without alcohol. I've never done this in my life since before I started drinking as a teenager. That's amazing, brother. It's huge for me. I thank God, yourself, and the program. Question, knowing what you know now, if you were to have another child, how would you prepare? What would you avoid? What new habits to adopt? What not to do? What to feed your wife, etc. You have given me a couple books and resources to look at that, that helped. It seems like the only way to have a near perfect diet is to rear, grow your own food, which is not possible for me at the moment. I'm curious what your personal approach would be if you were in my situation, how to prepare to have the healthiest child possible with limited resources. So this is something that came up to me with me recently because I think about what I would go and do different. I did a lot of things right. And I'm not bragging, but I, with the grace of God, first of all, let the internet happen as soon as I started, you know, having a family. So I was like, well, I could do research on what to eat and what my wife should eat. And that's why I avoided, you know, we did home birth. We avoided, none of my children are vaccinated. I guess I could say that now because people are starting to become privy to this, to, you know, what it's all about. So I learned about that. I learned about organic food. I learned about all kinds of things, right? And now I'm homeschooling my kids all because of the grace of the internet. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I, that I got all that information, much of which I've spoken to you guys about. I've given you resources. Me even saying it now, you could go down those, those rabbit holes. Couple things. Number one, you got your faith life in order, your Catholic foundations. Once again, God is so good to me that I'm able to repair the, the failure on my part. And my, it's amazing how my, my family's coming around, my wife's coming around, my children coming around, and it's working out. In many ways, God works in mysterious ways, and I'm happy that it is this way because I could have started off strong in faith and then failed as my children needed it the most when they were teenagers, right? Like my parents did, right? They started us strong in faith, and then by the time we became teenagers, they, they, they left, they let it go. And then, so it was like, oh, all that was for nothing. And then I just ran off and became all kinds of different weird things until I came back at age 40. So I'm kind of happy that like I failed in the beginning, but now when it matters most, I'm, I've returned to the faith and I'm living a Catholic life and it, it, because it's the most important time now. So you're doing it right. Start right. But the key is final perseverance. It's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. So now that you're getting your foundations right, stick with it, stick with it to the end. That's the thing about faith, especially being a Catholic. Catholic, one of the beautiful things about the Catholic faith is the focus on death. I don't think there are too many other faiths that put as much focus on death as the Catholic faith. And it has a lot to do with the fact that we believe that you go to heaven, but you don't just get there because you said some magic words. <laughs> oh, I believe. Good, you're going to heaven. No, we have to work. And I like that too. And that is biblical. You must do the works. It must, you got to put in your time and you got to receive the sacraments. You got to do the things that God asks us to do. Christ asks us to do. Christ asks us to do a bunch of stuff. And his brilliant disciples and apostles carried that on for us through tradition. So you got to stick with it to the end. You don't, just, you, don't just, you don't just say magic words and that's it. And then you go live a diabolical life and say, oh, but God loves me. Don't work that way. God needs perfection. Just, just think of it, just th think how logical this is. If God is pure perfection and we are to merge with him in heaven, we can't have any stain of sin. So if you have any mortal sin, definitely you're going to hell. If you have venial sins, this is why purgatory makes sense. Purgatory is not a place, it's a state that a soul must go through 
before it can truly merge with God the Father because God the Father is perfect. And if you die with hangups, addictions, anger, wrong thought, heresy, things like that, then you, that needs to be purged out of your soul. Hopefully we could do it in this lifetime. That's the whole point of being a faithful Catholic is to purge yourself of these fall, these follies and these errors and the stain of sin now so that when we do die, we can merge and be in what they call the beatific vision and to see God face to face. Not everybody that dies get to see God face to face like that. Don't let them fool you. So final perseverance, work on, your, work on the salvation of your soul and the sanctity of your wife. You got to work on those things now and forever and with your children. It's a beautiful thing. So I'm happy you're doing that. That's one thing I would do differently. But <laughs> I'm going a little left field here with you right now. I think there's a lot of value to much of what is proposed in traditional Chinese medicine. I know a lot of people, specifically Christians and Catholics, have hangups with that. But I'm not so sure that that's, uh, a lot of their hangups are valid. Some are valid. Some are totally valid. But not all of them. You don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? That's what Protestants did with, with the Catholic Church. They threw the baby out with the bathwater. Hey, there's some things there that are questionable that, that shouldn't have been happening or you shouldn't do. But you, you can't throw it all out. The traditional Chinese medicine has a lot to say in terms of natural health, reproductive health, natural reproductive health. And so I'm not an expert in this, and I didn't do a lot of these things. I just read books, and I'm like, oh, man, I wish I would have known that. One of the things among many, and basically I'm saying it would be good for you to read uh, books, traditional Chinese medicine books, and there's some of them. Montak Chia, again, I don't, I don't believe in everything he's saying, but there's a lot of things that he teaches about male sexuality and, and developing. And, and, and I mean, this is biblical too. In the Bible, in, in I think Deuteronomy or, or Leviticus or something says, don't spill your seed on the soil, right? That means don't blow your load unnecessarily, right? Don't, don't, don't have sterile sex with your wife and don't masturbate. What does that basically mean? Semen retention. Right. And the Bible is so kind of like it's poetic and mystical and like the words are like, what is it actually saying? Right. There was this one quote that I used the other day in a video. I thought it was awesome. But it basically says this is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats her food, wipes her mouth and says, I've done nothing wrong. Well, what is that? That's which means she goes and she screws around. She takes a shower, washes her, her vagina and says, I didn't do anything. Right. But it's eat the food. And so there's like, you know, you got to like. Uh, decipher it it's encrypted sometimes so the bible says don't blow your load on, unless it's to make a baby so one of the things in traditional chinese medicine first of all your everything that your body produces comes from what you're eating i don't want to i don't want to liken your your seed your semen to poop or spit but Someone who's putting crappy food in their mouth, bad food, they're just toxic food, they're going to have toxic breath because the breath coming out of their mouth is, is, is made up of the food. People with bad breath is because they've been eating bad food and, and their body's rotting on the inside. Or someone who's got, you know, been eating the wrong thing, their poop smells real bad. Somebody who's eating a pretty healthy diet, their poop don't smell that bad. They fart, farting isn't wrong with farting, but when somebody fart really stink, it's like, what did you eat? There's something toxic in there that you shouldn't have eaten. Right. That happens to me sometimes when I know I, I, I shouldn't have eaten that. Right. And the older I get is the more like, man, I shouldn't have had that one dumb thing. Right. I just had that one. I had a one of it. And now here I am making stinking farts. Right. Because your body's like, ugh. your body produces semen and the seed. And you not. I mean, having a stinky fart <laughs> is one thing, but having a stinky, having a stinky emission, blowing a stinky load. <laughs> Blowing a stinky load is going to give you weak kids. So two things I'll just, I'm going to throw in there, right? I'm having fun with you. There's a whole lot I could have been talking about. But I think, I mean, you're a smart guy. You're into fitness. You, you know a lot of these things. You quit drinking alcohol. That's great. But I'm curious, and I would pay attention to what traditional Chinese medicine has to say about fertility for men and women. I would, I would you know, be discerning about what you choose, right? Not all this stuff is legit. Some of it's a little weird, but some of them make sense, like semen retention and eating foods that, are, that produce healthy nuts. And so 
I didn't say it explicitly, but one of the things I would do, and I heard about this, is first of all, you want to eat the right foods, but you want to retain that semen that you will intentionally use to blow your load to make a baby. You want to have an intention, an intentional ejaculation for a baby. And that means that you got to build up to it. And so there's this idea that, well, you, first of all, be healthy. Don't drink alcohol. Stay away from toxins. Do all the things that you do to have a healthy emission. But the more you build it up rather than, you know, spilling your seed, the more that help that just think about the potency, the potency of that seed, that semen, right? That, that load starts to grow. And so I would, I would, knowing now what I know about a woman's rhythms and how important it is for multiple different things, save up that load for a month. Save up, or longer if you can. <laughs> save up and be intentional about what you eat, what you do, what you think, all of it. Save up that load, and then when you know that she's um, ovulating, you blow that giant healthy load right up in her. And then say a prayer. <laughs> Make your baby with that. I think that's how you'll get the healthiest baby. I know in our weak, egalitarian, soft pod, sissy world, um, they don't like to hear this, right? Uh, because they think everybody's equal. We're now all equal. There's some people that's weak and there's some people that's strong. Uh, it's just what it is. No, but we're all equal. No, you're not. Some people are healthy. Some people are weak. Um, they don't want to hear about, you know, doing things that make your children weak. But some children, just think about it, come from a weak weak nut. I think about myself and my children and some of the things I was doing the night that we conceived. And I'm like, oh, man. And I look at my kids. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, maybe that's because I was drinking that night. Man. Right? But I, and maybe that's true. Maybe that's not true. But the point is... Um, I, I blame myself sometimes. I'm like, I could have had a healthier nut when I blew it that day. That day. Maybe that's why this kid is talking back. <laughs> maybe that's why this kid is allergic to dairy. Maybe I was. Maybe I. Maybe I was eating too much, drinking too much milkshakes or protein shakes or something when I blew that load. <laughs> Crazy stuff to think about, but it's kind of legit. Like, it's, there's some. Somebody said this the other day to me, or uh, wrote a comment. It was like. Elliot says some stuff that sounds pretty ridiculous, but it sounds true, too, at the same time. I know that I sound ridiculous, what I'm saying, but at the same time, it's like, hmm, it's, it makes you think. Yeah, make you think. I want to have healthy loads. And again, this is not me making it up. This is traditional Chinese medicine stuff, so I will look into that, dude. Hope that helps, man. Done. Did you know that there's a secret psychological and social war on masculinity in the West since at least the 1960s? If you think I'm crazy, you need to watch my new free masterclass. You'll learn the history and origin of this war, as well as how it's affecting your health, your finances, and how females respond to you. If you're a man who's open to a compelling vision of traditional masculinity, financial freedom, success with women, and generous leadership, then you'll definitely want to study this class. It's called Make Men Strong Again, how millions of men are fighting back and winning the war against masculinity. Just click the link in this video or visit MakeMenStrongAgain.com and get this brand new masterclass. It's completely free. It will blow your mind and has a ton of value and it's about 40 minutes long. So make sure that you pay attention and take notes. Why am I sharing this? I'm a mentor to millions of men worldwide on YouTube. So I'm familiar with the biggest reasons why men today are failing in so many areas of their life. And the answer will rock your world but it's not totally your fault. Find out what's really going on. Click the link in this video to watch this class and start taking action today.